Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to learn all about albedo. And I chose this picture here because it's actually albedo in a nutshell. And in fact, it includes some of the things that we need to consider in this unit on climate change. So we can see from the picture, albedo has to do with either sunlight being absorbed or sunlight being reflected by different types of surfaces. So let's take a look at our learning goals here. You should be able to describe albedo. You should be able to determine whether the albedo would be higher or lower under various conditions. And you should be able to describe the albedo feedback loops, and we have two of those. So first of all, albedo is the amount of sunlight reflected by a surface. So if we look at the picture on the left, we have something that's light colored. And you can see from the, the thickness of the arrow, a lot of the light is reflected. So it has a high albedo because much of the light is reflected. On the left, there's something that's dark colored. And you can see from the size of the arrows that most of it is being absorbed and only a little bit is being reflective. So it has a low low albedo because only a little bit is reflected. So if we take into consideration, well, what does this actually have to do with our Earth and you know our climate change unit? Well, different uh, surfaces and different substances on Earth have different albedos. Um, so if you look at, for example, thick clouds versus thin clouds. If we're in a situation where there's a lot of cloud cover, so lots of thick clouds, you can see that 70 to 80% of the sunlight is actually going to be reflected. But if there's less clouds, so if they're very thin, only 25 to 50% of the light is reflected, which means more is absorbed onto the Earth. Uh, if we take a look even at water, so water, you think it has a certain albedo, but it depends on the angle of the sun. When the sun is almost directly overhead, there is an albedo of about 3 to 5%, so almost all of that sunlight is absorbed. But when the, the sun is closer to the horizon, so it's coming on that sharp angle, around 50 to 80% albedo. So you can see there's a big difference in albedo with water depending on that angle. And then you can see all sorts of other other uh, trees and earth and snow and so on, how they vary. Now, I would never expect you to memorize this to know all of these different uh, percentages for the different uh, situations. However, you should be able to look at this and interpret it. So if I said there's an area with a lot of trees and then there's another area with a lot of snow, which one would have a higher albedo or which one would absorb or reflect more of the light? You should be able to interpret that. Here we can see on Earth, and this gets us a little bit closer to these feedback loops that we'll talk about in a second. When we have areas that are covered in lots of snow, there's a high albedo, so most of that sunlight is reflected, but areas that are in water actually have a much lower albedo, and so there's more light, more of the heat and more of the light that's absorbed. So when we get into these feedback loops, first of all, what is a feedback loop? Well, it's something that has, there's a cause that creates an effect, and that effect actually has an effect on the original cause, or it, it, um, it influences the original cause. So an albedo feedback loop is an example of a positive feedback loop where something happens and there's an outcome, and then that influences the original thing in a positive way to make the circle go uh, almost like a spiral around and around again. So albedo feedback loops relate primarily to the differences in the albedo of water and snow like we saw on that last slide. So if we start off with the warming albedo feedback loop, and this is something that we're seeing right now on Earth, if the Earth's temperature increases, then the ice and the snow melts. If the ice and the snow melt, then less of the sun's radiation is reflected because there's a lower albedo because that ice and snow has now turned into water. And if less of the sun's radiation is reflected, that means more is absorbed. If more is absorbed, the temperature will go up. The temperature goes up, more of the snow and ice will melt, and so on. And so it causes this spiral. So that's the warming albedo feedback loop. 
Let's take a look at the cooling loop. This is almost just the opposite. So if the earth temperature decreases, then you're going to have more ice and more snow forming. If there's more ice and more snow, they have a higher albedo, so more of the sunlight is reflected, less is absorbed to heat up the earth, which means that the temperature is going to decrease. More ice and snow form, and so on and so on. So those are the two feedback loops. In this situation, the cooling feedback loop, you might see during an ice age. So that would be a typical situation for a uh, cooling feedback loop. So let's take another look at our learning goals. You should be able to describe albedo, determine whether the albedo would be higher or lower under various conditions, and describe the albedo feedback loops. If you can do all these things, fantastic. If not, please re-watch this video, and if you're still having trouble, come ask me a class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.